Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about construction documents, the fourth phase in the architectural project process. This is what we call construction documents. Sometimes you might call them blueprints. Let's recap where we are in the architectural project process. We have collected all the information that we need to do the design here in pre-design phase one. Then in phase two, schematic design, we have worked through our options and come up with a design that we like. The next phase, phase three, was design development, where we started to uh, turn that uh, design into reality by applying structure and mechanical systems and selecting materials and fixtures and fittings. And now we're here in phase four, construction documents. Construction documents are comprised of drawings and written specifications on some projects. Um, most residential projects won't have written specifications, uh, but larger uh, house, house projects will, and most commercial projects do have specifications as well. The drawings and the specifications, if we have any, are used primarily for three things to apply for a permit, to solicit bids from contractors, and three, to, for the contractor to actually build from. So they're very important. And they're called contract documents because they, are actu they actually become part of the contract between you and the contractor so that he is contractually obligated to execute the drawings uh, and the design as they appear in the drawings. That's why they're called contract documents. The number of sheets in a set of drawings will vary depending on the size of the project. A fairly simple project will have less sheets and a more complicated project or a larger project will have more sheets. To give you an idea, uh, most architects work on sheets that are 24 by 36 or 22 by 34 or 30 by 42. Those are the three kind of standard sheet sizes that most architects and engineers use. And that's a big area of, of uh, real estate, uh, drawing real estate. And in those sets, you want to minimize the cost of printing. So the, the sheets tend to be jammed with information. So they're pretty uh, information dense. A typical accessory dwelling unit project here in the Bay Area will have between 20 and 30 sheets, depending on the city. And a, uh, a house project will have between about the same because a, 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 an accessory dwelling is just a little house. So, uh, but a house might have 30 to 40 sheets or how complicated the design is. Um, and some projects have enormous sheet counts. I worked on a project many years ago that had over 300 sheets when you counted the architectural, structural, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing drawings all together, it was like over 300 sheets. Uh, a lot of work goes into preparing construction documents, and it usually represents about 40% of an architect's fee. That's according to the American Institute of Architects. So um, it's a lot of work. This is a set of drawings I'm working on right now. They're not complete, um, but it gives you some idea of uh, what we do here. Uh, this is the title sheet. Uh, some people like to put a pretty picture of the project on the title sheet, but I prefer to put useful information there. So it has uh, a list of all the drawings we're going to have. It has some rules about how the drawings are interpreted, a description of the project team, the codes to which we're designing, and basic information about the building. And in this, in this case, I also have uh, the site plan, a location map, and the assessor's parcel map on the cover sheet. This same project, I also have a sheet of uh, general notes that uh, tell the contractor some of the basic things that I want them to do, having to do with carpentry and electrical and smoke detectors and so on. All that. Uh, we get then... to uh, the plan drawings. In this case, uh, the existing uh, plan is on the top 
and the proposed plan is on the bottom. We're doing some fire repair in this case, uh, fixing up a building after a fire. And then we also have to include, because the planners and building department want to see it, the other floors of the building where even though there's no work, we have to show what's going on up there so that they can uh, know uh, what's going on in the building. And then in this case, we have some enlarged plans of the toilet rooms that we're working on, the bathrooms that we're working on. And, uh, and then we have uh, so far uh, one sheet of details um, and that will fill up uh, rapidly as we detail the bathrooms. This is another set of drawings. Um, I wanted to show you this because this has uh, building elevations on it. Um, and then we have yeah. uh, multiple sections through the building to tell the contractor um, how high the ceilings are, where, where the ceiling is flat, where the ceiling is sloped, and so on, uh, along with uh, lo you know, way more construction details, uh, different ways of building different walls uh, throughout the building, uh, roof details and framing details, windows and so on. These are schedules so that every single window here um, has information about it and every door is described in its size and its hardware type and its width and all that kind of stuff. So this is all things that we do to describe the building to the contractor and uh, how we think it ought to be built. When you hire an architect to design a remodel or design a new home or design an accessory dwelling unit or a, a commercial building or whatever, what you're doing is asking for something that's custom, uh, that's never been done before. Or if it has been done before, it hasn't been done before on your site, for you, in your city, and so it is a one of a kind. And even though there are construction standards um, for making walls and building foundations and making roofs and installing windows, all of that has to be rethought and reconsidered for every project. When you don't rethink it and when you don't reconsider it, you often end up with very expensive construction problems. So construction documents are absolutely critical to the success of your project. They need to be complete and they need to be clear and they need to be understandable so that the contractor understands the intent. Your, your house, your project has never been built before and all of that has to be thought through, even if you're using normal construction standards, because it's all new. If you've found the information in this video useful or informative, feel free to subscribe or watch more videos.